All right, Mary, what did we talk about? We covered like homeschooling mm -hmm. and college and yeah. not going to college. <laughs> 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 well, that, that that is for good reasons, right? We talk about why not going to college for you because you yes. had a business and you your our business is booming, and I'm so excited for you. Yes. <laughs> you want to redo that? <laughs> no. That no. Is okay. Welcome to Try with Ping. This is Ping Robert, and in this podcast, we will cover a range of different topics from culture, languages, and underrepresented stories. Join me with a cup of chai and listen to these stories. Welcome back to Chai with Ping. This is Ping Robert. Today, we have a very special woman that I met at church uh, in a small group, and she's an artist. She uh, she is a founder. She's the founder of Fragile Glory Impression. From her, so please do reach out. And she's also a wife and a new mom. So let's welcome Mary Langevich. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me, Ping. Did I say your last name right? I've never pronounced that. Yeah, right. language. It's it's a hard one. Language. language. Yeah. Language. language. So mm -hmm. she's Mary. Welcome to my show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> How old is Tobias? Or to do you say Tobias or Tobias? We call Tobias. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess you can do it either way. I've heard people say it the other way, but yeah, we call him Tobias or Toby. <laughs> Yay. And he is almost three months old. Next Aww. week, he'll be three months old. So, yeah, he's he's getting big. <laughs> yeah, I saw the picture today on Instagram. I'm like, oh, that's a little melty, buttery face. I know. He's, he's, <laughs> he's kind of chunky. Yeah. <laughs> Eating a lot, which yeah. is good. So, mm -hmm. I, as you, we have already mentioned to the listeners, like, you have your own business and also you're a wife and a mom. So, that's mm -hmm. why I invited you to, you know, share some of your voices. And also, I'm so curious about the whole journey of, you know, starting your own business as a freelancer. I'm the oldest of five kids, um, four biological and one adopted from China. And uh, I was born and raised in Colorado, <laughs> so I'm definitely Colorado native to Colorado. Uh, besides the three, four years that my um, and I was homeschooled from second grade through high school, uh, and I, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> I love being homeschooled. Not everyone can say that, those people that have been homeschooled, but I definitely loved it. Um, at age 12, I started my own business, which is now called Fragile Glory Impressions, which is an art studio, um, and I sell art and do art products and all of that stuff. Um, it's, the studio's definitely devoted. the passion behind the business um, and just to create quality art and to create quality art instruction for anyone that's interested in learning that. So uh, most of the content now is online, but that's kind of, yeah, just a little brief intro to me. We will have two sections, right? The first one, I want to talk about the homeschooling um, experience, right? Because I, a lot of people kind of, I think for me, I, I went to a public education system in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So like, it um, mysterious or right. is it a mystery? Yeah. <laughs> so like you said that you loved um, being homeschooled, like what right. are the benefits that you see and why do you love it? Honestly, the one of the biggest benefits was that you personally struggled with things like 
um, math and reading. <laughs> like I had, you know, lots of tests done and we did lots of things to try to I think that's the biggest thing that I really enjoyed was like, yes, I'm going to have like, everyone's got their subjects that they struggle in. And because I was homeschooled, I could really work on those slowly until I understood it and not have to feel like I have to keep up with the class. Uh, yeah. And there's honestly, there's a lot of time in a day, <laughs> a lot of time in a day. And I think that, I think the next big positive for me was that once my schoolwork was done, like the stuff I had to get done, I, could do the stuff I wanted later, like learn art or, you know, draw or paint or play with my siblings or f have friends over, you know, all these different things that I could do once my schoolwork was done. Whereas like in a school setting, you know, you're there for like, what, six, eight hours or something. And you're sometimes you're sitting in a class or I'm waiting for everyone to be done or for the class to be over when you're already done. You know, there's lots of wasted time. And I think that homeschooling really helps you to maximize the use of time, um, which I think is a huge, huge benefit. Um, I have a question. What yeah, is a typical yeah. day for you to be homeschooled? Like what is, so, you know, like you can cater your schedule to, to your likings, but like, I'm just wondering, like, how do you actually schedule your day? Right. And it, it's different for different homeschool families, I will say. Everyone's got their got their thing. But uh, my mom definitely wanted to have a good start to school in the morning. So we had to set our alarms for 6.30 or 7 and get up and usually had to get dressed. <laughs> I will say sometimes we had to, <laughs> we did. Uh, <laughs> That's so cute. Somet yeah, sometimes yeah. we did our school in our pajamas. Um, um, that just happens sometimes, you know, you're at home. Why not? Yeah. Um, but she really tried to get us up on time so that we it's could an start. an attitude thing. Yeah, 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 really. And we wanted to start, you know, on time and start early. And so we would do things, I think I would do things like math, things that were harder for me in the morning when my brain was sharper. So math and and reading and um can't even remember now what else we had in the science? morning but science i would do science yeah. more in the afternoon personally because it was more okay. reading mm. and experiments and stuff like that so that yeah. ended up taking more time but yeah those types of things in the morning and then actually in the afternoon because i have you know four other siblings <laughs> i'm the yeah. oldest of five and so my mom's not just homeschooling me she's homeschooling all these kids at once and so in the afternoon, we'd call it afternoon school, where we would gather together and, you know, usually in the living room, on the living room floor, and my there and they'd listen and we'd be coloring or drawing or taking notes as she would read to us you know we'd have like scripture memorization during that time or activities or different things and so that would kind of happen where it's kind of combining the different ages together to learn together and honestly you know some people are like oh that doesn't how's that gonna work with different ages and different learning levels and it honestly worked great I think the younger kids learn to challenge themselves a little more because my mom is, you know, teaching for the oldest kid and the younger is just kind of listen and follow along and you really can learn quickly that way for sure. So, um, did you guys have like a package of curriculum or materials that you buy or it's like she, your mom would gather information or materials for you guys to learn? She would gather things and it would be depending on the student, on the child <laughs> and what grade. It was definitely a full time job for my mom to just even figure out what to teach, like what curriculum to give each kid for the year. Um, but that was definitely her joy. I think she found a lot of joy in that over every summer kind of planning and figuring out, okay, what should, what should Mary do this year for math? And, you know, like trying to cater it all to the, 
individual student, which I think is another benefit of homeschooling. Like you have so much control over what your child's learning and how they learn it and what material they use and what material is best for them. Actually, I have an example because math was hard for me and I'm a visual learner. My mom's, my mom specifically uh, picked a, a visual math for me curriculum that used blocks and like anything visual in it was part of the the problem you know and so like my mom could really cater it to each student which i think was is really really cool oh like so then after you finish like maybe one chapter or so how about the assessment and testing that kind of thing do you reach to a great level like how do you make sure that you're learning enough I guess learning too much is not not a yeah problem, right right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, that's a good question I mean there's definitely requirements for homeschoolers um, but it's not what you think I think for a child so if they're homeschooled, that's like the requirement. Obviously in high school, there's certain subjects you need as well so that you can get, you know, you can graduate and get your transcript. Um, so really other than that, as long as you're reaching those things, you're good. Um, the other, the other part that we did every, I think it was every other year, we did standardized testing where that would be a perfect example of like, I mean, really it's mostly for the teacher to know how well they're teaching and how well the student is understanding the information. Um, but my mom would, would do that. She would order the test and we would take those tests at home every other year. Um, Got it. Wow. What are the challenges? I mean, you said so much about like the advantage of being homeschooled or your mom has a lot of autonomy over what you guys learn. What are the challenges that you found from your own experience? Um, I think, you know, for me, for me, I don't, I think it was such a good fit for me. Or, um, there's a lot of just learning styles and individual personality that it wouldn't work for and so you know there's a lot of people that have tried homeschooling and it just does not work or they don't like it or their kids are like struggling because they need you know different things um, or they need more help or all these different scenarios that can make homeschooling a challenge um, and i would just say that you know in my experience that none of that was the case <laughs> it was very much i think and I, maybe for my siblings, it's different. You'd, you'd have to ask them <laughs> if they, if they had specific challenges. I, I think they probably did. Um, but I think for me and my personality, it worked out so well. Educated in that way. And so I, I guess it's a very common question that people will ask you like, oh, you're homeschooled. Then how do you get your class? community in Colorado specifically is really large. It's huge. And it's, it's bigger than it was when I was first homeschooled. Um, but at the time that my mom was starting to homeschool us, you know, there was resources and there's, there's what we call homeschool groups. <laughs> so different groups that, that are different, uh, homeschool families that live in specific areas will kind of get together, um, and they, you know, sometimes they'd have a name for their group or whatever, and anyone can join. And what you do is that you, you kind of just gather with these other homeschool families and you do activities like field trips, or maybe you do things like science experiments together, or maybe one of the moms.
uh, holiday parties or doing school together, you know, or giving presentations. Yeah. talent show where yeah. different students could you know they could do a dance performance or they could show off their art or they could do a speech mm -hmm. or they could do you know so there was a lot of opportunities like that as well yeah, yeah. Uh, which is huge because I, I definitely some of my oldest friends mm -hmm. I've met through those groups and I'm still friends with them to this day so definitely that was a big one um, another thing was this is different than a homeschool group it's like a co-op or a homeschool enrichment program where you basically, it's a little bit more structured, <laughs> and you basically go and you take different classes and different subjects, and it's usually just once a week. Um, and that's actually where I teach art, art right now, is um, these different homeschool. Things at these specific enrichments, um, things that you know normally parents would struggle with teaching or just don't want to teach their kid. Um, and so that was one way that we definitely met a lot of other students, a lot of other homeschoolers, so. Uh, got it, okay. So like for some of the kids, mine actually have all the afternoons packed with different group class schedules like art or dance or sports, right? Because you can't really homeschool sports. It, like, right, maybe right. It's like, maybe yoga you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but ball Anything sport, on, anything's on YouTube, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, got it. So, like, wow, that's very I would definitely say that there's a there's a generation of homeschoolers. I, I've got some, like, older, older friends that said that they didn't really have those types of things. And so, like, was there any, like, any stories or incident that happened that you kind of just remember the most from all those years of being homeschooled? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. School that my mom would do for us, like looking back, it's like that was really impactful for I think each of us because it was really, I mean, homeschooling in general, it's the other benefit is that you just like are so connected with your family. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's for every family. <laughs> I had some family friends that w that were homeschooled and the connection with their siblings was a little rough at times. But for me growing up, it was definitely like, my siblings are my best friends. And I, I'm so close with my parents and like this whole family dynamic is so, so strong. And I think that's probably the, the coolest thing about homeschooling and the biggest memory for me was you know, you're, you're sitting at the dining room table with all your siblings and we're all working on our own school at our own time and our own pace, you know, um, and we're eating snacks and we sneak over to the cabinet and we sneak some more snacks and we get some water and we get up and we go outside for a little bit, come back in and mom's like, sit down, do your work, you know, <laughs> and then we're quiet for a little bit and then we get distracted yeah. again and then you get, you know, just like normal I, kids in class, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Just really like with is. your siblings. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I think that those memories are 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 pretty great and definitely that's not every family there's we had family friends that were not quite that connected mm -hmm. and it's just different personalities you know not connecting yeah. very well at home and that's yeah. fine so Last question before we jump into your you know, business part. Um, mm -hmm. Now you have a son. So will you yes. homeschool Toby or you have other plans and why? Um, yeah, my husband and I are definitely planning to homeschool him. Um, and I think it works out really good with just my business um, goals. Um, and he, my husband likes the idea of homeschooling more so now than maybe at first, but he just likes the fact that we can have our kids around us all the time. Um, so yeah, we're definitely thinking of homeschooling our kids and Tobias for sure. <laughs>
college? Yeah. So I, um, let's see, I, I was 12 when I started the business and what I was doing was into little note cards and selling them at like craft fairs and like shows and to family and friends and that was like that's all I was doing <laughs> you know like hardly paying anything to make these cards and selling them but the you know the because of the homeschool community being so large my the word spread around and so there's lots of people like asking for my cards and wanting to buy my cards and the whole card business started growing and um, from there I was like definitely wanting to someday my whole dream when I was about 10 years old I was like I want to have <laughs> um, and so that was my whole sort of goal and of course like at the time it seems like how am I gonna get there you know and my parents were so I, I give my the, all the credit to my parents because they were such a huge encouragement and they basically directed me the right direction <laughs> on going down the business route or make art and make money so uh they directed me down the business route but not in a formal way like they didn't I don't know if I've ever taken a business class before. Um, and yes, I did go to college for a short period of time. I was like, I only was educated in business. It just sort of the business grew with me. Um, and I like to think of it as like, I had to learn along the things like taxes and finances and all these things had to grow with the business um, but yeah I'm trying to get back to what I was saying before how did you start how did you first start did you just start at the age of 12 start teaching or like so then teaching yeah so I had the card business from age 12 you know for a few years or whatever and then eighth grade I started teaching so that summer I just put out little flyers um, to kids in the neighborhood and to other homeschool kids that I knew that lived close by and I was it was a little drawing class how to how to draw or something like that and it was like a five-day kind of like a summer camp type of idea at my parents house and I advertised for it I planned it out I set up the room like I, I just got all into it like this is what I wanted to do I was so excited so that was when I first started teaching kids was eighth grade and then from you're there, only eighth grade yeah I'm only how eighth old grade. are you <laughs> yeah how old is an eighth grader um 14 yeah 13 14 or something okay yeah. and then how little were the kids <laughs> the kids were I there was actually a student that was my age one of my mm -hmm. friends wanted to take it and then the rest were like my siblings age so you know maybe 12 and under or something okay um, there was maybe only six Then from there, you know, I started teaching at these different homeschool enrichment programs and mm -hmm. um, started just with one and taught a few classes there and kind of just slowly grew where I was teaching up until last semester. I was teaching uh, at four or five different homeschool enrichment programs at like some semesters. It was up to 200 students in a semester I was teaching. So like it, it grew pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I when I was growing up, when I was between 7 and 12 or so, I was taking classes at a nearby art studio. And I basically kind of copied some of the teaching, or some of the class ideas that they were teaching me at the time. 
And so I teach a lot of the stuff that they taught me then, like, you know, how to draw using the right side of your brain and, you know, color pencil drawing techniques and watercolor, like all the basics, like I learned at that studio, I now try to teach to my students. And I've, I've obviously developed my own syllabus for each class and, and developed my own curriculum, which I think is probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, yes, but, but like you took courses in college, but you were not majoring in art, right? Oh. Yeah. So, so growing up, I I went to a nearby studio and took mm. art classes because my mom couldn't teach me art, my dad didn't want yeah. to teach me art, and um, <laughs> you know the homeschool group that we were in didn't have art, so it was kind of yeah. like oh, we had to find somewhere for me to learn, to learn. more yeah. about that. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then college, I was definitely working towards an art degree, an art major. That was it. I wasn't really working for a business major or anything. I was just going for art. And as I was doing that, I was like, I don't know if this is right for me. <laughs> Why? Why isn't going towards an art degree is not right for you? Well, I was already doing what I wanted to do. I had this um, studio that I was running. I was teaching art classes. I was still making cards and making art and doing commissions. And I was basically doing everything that I wanted. My whole dream was, you know, kind of fleshed out and coming true already. And I was kind of at college. I was, I was the student that would only go on Fridays. Like I only took Friday classes. <laughs> no one takes Friday classes. I only went on Friday and took Friday classes. Um, and so I didn't, you know, I didn't meet anybody. And I was there for like one class on Friday for like a whole semester. And I was like, it's going to definitely was not a, an easy decision to decide to quit because <laughs> I was like, I, I kind of panicked thinking I'm never going to go back and I'm never going to, you know, keep learning. I'm going to lose like my art skill or I'm going to never improve or I'm going to, you know, plateau or something like that. Um, so I was a little afraid of what that would lead to. But honestly, it was probably the best decision I've made for my time, my money, and my business was dropping out. And obviously, I'm, I don't recommend that for everybody. <laughs> it just worked. <laughs> Um, it just definitely with art, it can be confusing because there's only mm -hmm. specific things in art that require a degree. And even if yeah. you don't have a degree, it comes down to your work and what you can create and yeah. your experience, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, it was a good decision. I think my parents helped talk me through like why I could drop out and it would be fine. <laughs> so it took a while for me to just decide. pretty expensive for college and all that. Was there a financial aspect to it? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, a little bit, definitely. I, I grew up with the mindset of really not collecting students, student loans. I really didn't want school, like right before I graduated and was done with being homeschooled. Uh, there's this, and they still have it to this day, you can basically, as a high school student, join a community college and take community college classes for college credit for mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, my mom just discovered it when I was a senior in high school, so I didn't get to take advantage of it as much as I would have liked. But I was able to take a whole year of some college courses for free um, through the community college nearby. So I did that. Um, but then, yeah, I was definitely going into each year kind of just thinking, I just, I just going to take it slow. I'm just going to take, 
you know, each class as it comes. And I was obviously only going to take a few classes at a time anyway. So the tuition was affordable, you know, so that's kind of how I was working it at the time to make it happen for me. Um, I didn't really work towards scholarships just cause I wasn't, I was so just on the fence about the whole art degree yeah. the whole time that I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can devote that much energy to that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say that that definitely was a big piece of it. I just didn't want it to, yeah, be an issue to anchor me too much down, you know, so... Because I was afraid I was going to plateau as an artist, uh, I, I found, I want to say easy, I found easy ways. <laughs> I found ways to challenge myself as an artist. So that meant things like um, giving because I had a studio space and so I wanted to be able to have a, a, a show at the end of a semester or something and, and show my work, you know? So that became something I was working towards a goal. Um, and I would usually challenge myself with like what technique or style or how many paintings I was going to get done in a certain amount of time. All those things were things that are just great skills as an artist to do your, your, uh, creative Um, up in the mountains in Colorado, there's a place called Anderson Ranch that does like all different types of art and you sign up for like a week of classes and you just go up there and it's like a whole retreat of you just taking that one class. So I did that a few times. Great environment. You meet other artists. Um, yeah, just a really, really good way to learn and network. studio um, just to kind of meet new people and to learn new styles of art and just keep making art and keep challenging myself beyond what I normally do and then I definitely seek things out online like free workshops or free oh, yeah. webinars you know oh, stuff yeah. like that I was doing yeah. a lot of that during quarantine this year mm -hmm. <laughs> I was yeah. like I want to listen to all these free you know talks on business or art or whatever and so those are very very um, educational and then I also try to read books geared to be challenging to work in and to be a professional, even though you're your own boss, you know, all these things um, that definitely are things I try to uh, keep myself educated and excited about. So like, then how do you expand your business? I mean, you, you said that you're connected with some um, homeschool groups and all that. So like you teach there, um, but like, how do you get students? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question <laughs> with an answer that doesn't apply to many people because my business definitely, because it grew with me, you know, I started when I was 12 and, um, it grew with me. So that meant my market grew with me and my, my advertising grew with me. And honestly, FGI, Fragile Glory Impressions, has grown because of word of mouth. Like, that's really the only, I mean, I think, try to think back to like, what did I do to advertise? It was like, I, I hardly advertised. <laughs> people would just email. I still even to this day get emails from people that are like, I heard from so-and-so that you taught this class here, that you, you know, have cards to sell or all these things. Like, can you come teach for us? Or like, I still to this day get emails like that because the homeschool community is so connected that you know, the word spreads pretty quickly. So if someone took a class from me like six years ago, they still know my name and they refer me to someone else, you know? So there's just this constant like network, which I think only would have come from the fact that I started so early. You know, my business is 16 years old this year. And so all those years of just attract new people and yeah. how do I get in contact with this homeschool group or that homeschool group and mm -hmm. so there's been definitely times where I do advertise and I try to make little posters mm -hmm. for email and have an email list and I'm constantly sending out stuff like that but 
you know, a lot of the Nintendo <laughs> customers and clients, right? Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 fun, but yeah, yeah, definitely it's a blessing to have that kind of as the the advertising is through people. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing your story. Well, we're yeah. coming to the end. So I, my last question is like, now what? Because um, I know that you moved out from your studio and then you recently moved house as well. And then the baby, what are your plans? And especially the pandemic is still spreading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? in a little office space that I used to teach in and have shows and all that stuff. And so that was kind of a bittersweet moment. Cause that was definitely like, Oh my gosh, this is the dream come. So as an artist, as an art teacher, and actually this has been a dream for maybe five to seven years or something was to get some online classes, get some art courses that are online that people can purchase no matter where they're from. They can, you know, take classes with me because I, it was probably the first thing I noticed when I actually got my studio space in Littleton, Colorado, was that it limited who could come to me. Like, even though I set up, you know, a business brick and mortar in this one spot, like there's people that couldn't make it to me because of the location. And I was like, hmm. In years that I was there, I noticed that the number of students signing up for classes went down like every year, less and less and less and less. And I was like, hmm, seeing that trend happening, I was like, I think it's because people are wanting online classes. People don't want to go out. People don't want to drive to me. You know, I had students driving from like DIA area, Denver, the Denver International Airport yeah. all the way to me. And I was wow. like, wow, that's dedication. <laughs> I yes. wouldn't do that. You know, yeah. so, and then I got people asking me like, do you do online? in-person classes, which was sad because I definitely like that face-to-face -face interaction. And then the second thing, I, I was pregnant with my first kid. And so I knew that life was going to change dramatically with a kid. And so that was a big, big thing I had to sort of think through. Like, what did, what did my business look like? Did, you know, and I, I want to create an environment for my child, for my children, um, that's similar to how I grew up, you know, this family dynamic where parents and siblings are all around and we're all, you know, working on stuff together. I want that kind of environment for my kids. And so I didn't want to be the mom that, you know, dropped my kid off at daycare and went off to work. It just wasn't the vision I had for myself and my family. And so I knew that introducing kids in the picture meant I could not teach in person quite as much which isn't bad. <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of the nice thing to take a break from some of that in-person. The big kicker, like that really is what put things into, into motion. Um, because I was like this of all times, this is the time to start online classes <laughs> yeah and you were so, forced to yeah i was forced <laughs> to he was pushed to that <laughs> exactly exactly yeah because all the in-person stuff i was doing now had to go on zoom so i was already teach getting experience with teaching you know classes live online which i actually enjoyed and then i had so much more time at home before baby came to Um, and then now just a few weeks ago, I actually launched my Fragile Glory Impressions teachable page. Yay. Yay. Yay! Yeah. Which has all my <laughs> online courses. Um, I've got five courses that I worked on that I was able okay. to launch and I'll just keep launching more. So yeah. that's kind wow. of where the direction that FGI has gone is uh -huh. getting rid of the brick and mortar and trying to work towards an online presence. still take in-person students? 
I do. I, I probably one of my favorite things to do is one-on-one -on -one instruction. Okay. Um, and so I actually do have quite a few students that I still, not right now during COVID yeah. and summer, yeah. but um, that I do teach one-on-one -on -one, um, classes to. So they usually would come to me at the studio at the time. Yeah. Um, and I would just teach them for that hour and they would work mm -hmm. on their own projects type of thing. And I definitely love that kind of, um, working on instructing that specific person in their, it's kind of like homeschooling yeah, yeah, <laughs> in yeah. their specific wants and, and desires for what they want to learn in their art yeah. education and kind of working with them individually. Website is FragileGloryImpressions.com. Okay, so listeners, yeah. I'll put the info in the in a Thanks for listening to Chai with Ping. Let us hear your voices and stories. Please share this episode, like, and follow us on Instagram at Chai with Ping. You can also email us at Chai with Ping at gmail.com. Till next time.